hurt. That would shock you. Well, we never should have gone to war, the Civil War. That from Republican White House hopeful Ron Paul, the Texas congressman saying Abe Lincoln only went to war to get rid of the in original intent of the Republic. Check out his response on Meet the Press when Tim Russert says we would still have slavery had we not. Oh, come on, Tim. Slavery was phased out in every other country of the world, and the way I'm advising that it should have been done is do like the British Empire did. You, you buy the slaves and release them. How much would that cost compared to killing 600,000 Americans and where it lingered for 100 years? I mean, the hatred and all that existed. So every other major country in the world got rid of slavery without a civil war. Bill Crystal is with us. He is the editor of the Weekly Standard. Kind of an interesting take for a presidential hopeful to be pay, uh, to be taking on one of the most popular presidents in American history. Well, he's a crackpot, John. And um, <laughs> you know, the extreme right has always hated Lincoln. The extreme left hates Lincoln. And, and as is often is the case, as often as the case with people like Ron Paul, the extreme right and extreme left have come together behind his candidacy. He doesn't approve of anything any American government has done, so far as I can tell, in the last 150 years. He's against the interventions in both world wars, I believe. He's against the Civil Rights Act of 1964. He's against you know efforts to uh, help poor people by the federal government. Um, uh, he claims to be a libertarian, but he doesn't seem to care much about liberty. I, I saw in the interview with Tim Russert, he also cites Vietnam as a wonderful place. But it shouldn't libertarians be a little unhappy about the, uh, the, the, the absolute absence of liberty in current Vietnam? So I, I think he, you know, he'll run in the primaries. He may run in the general election, as Pat Buchanan and Ross Perot did. He may get some votes. But um, I, I don't think at the end of the day, he's, uh, let's hope he's not going to be a serious player in this campaign. Well, I guess his point is you had 600,000 dead in the Civil War, the bloodiest war in American history. He says it simply wasn't worth the cost that you could have gotten rid of slavery another way. Well, there's really no evidence of that. I mean, there's no examples of countries that had slavery institutionalized the way we did in half of our country, a whole economic system built around it. Uh, there were many efforts by the North to persuade the South to give it up uh, uh, peacefully, uh, but the slavery, the slavery forces were aggressive in the, 19, in the 1850s, not receding. Uh, look, you can have an interesting academic debate about whether Lincoln's tactics and strategy were right, whether different policies in the 1830s, 1840s, 1850s might have led to a different place. But Ron Paul's fundamental position is anti-American. Let's be honest about it. He does not like the United States, any policy the United States of America has pursued anywhere in the world or at home for the last century or so. Now, he's a crank, but there's a market for cranks. As I say, I think he'll, 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 he'll probably run as an independent candidate in the general election. He might get five, six, seven percent of the vote. He might be in the debates the way Perot was. I, I think that would be unfortunate. It will distract us from the real world around there. I think Republicans in particular, though, you look at the news you just reported about the bomb attempt in, in Turkey. Look at Rick Leventhal's very interesting report from Anbar. We're fighting wars against Islamic jihadism around the world. They attacked us on 9-11. The Republican Party is not going to take seriously, ultimately, someone who thinks we're responsible for 9-11 uh, and who thinks we ha don't have serious threats around the world and a serious obligation to help those who stand for liberty and decency around the world. But what does that mean? I mean, is there the possibility if he were to run as an independent, would he siphon votes from whoever the Republican nominee is in the way that many people think uh, Ralph Nader did uh, from Al Gore in 2000? I actually think he could hurt the Democrats as much. He'll run as the pure anti-war, pure isolationist candidate. And in some sense, I think, since the Democrats are going to be more anti-war than the Republicans, uh, he may siphon more votes from them. But mostly, I think he'll take disaffected voters, voters who hate both parties, voters who think America has just a, been horribly governed for a century. I don't know that he matters at the end. Uh, let's get a quick take from you on, on the wider Republican race. Uh, some interesting things are happening. Rudy Giuliani has, has lost some support. Mike Huckabee really rocketed up, now seems to be losing some support. Uh, John McCain is gaining ground, at least in Iowa and, and apparently New Hampshire as well. He is. I think McCain is the interesting question now. Can he snatch third, conceivably even possibly second in Iowa? He's spending two days in Iowa right after Christmas. Um, he's not given up on Iowa. He spent no money for paid television in, in Iowa, by contrast with Romney and Huckabee. Uh, can he just use a small organization he has in Iowa and the strength of his personal visit right after Christmas and the day before the caucuses to snatch third, get momentum into New Hampshire, win New Hampshire? Then McCain is a finalist, presumably against Romney and Huckabee 
maybe, I would think, as we go through the next month. Giuliani will try to come in later after doing, doing nothing in Iowa and doing badly in New Hampshire. It now looks uh, as if that will be his situation. I'm pretty skeptical that Giuliani has much of a path to the nomination now. Uh, Thompson making a last-ditch effort in Iowa. It's a pretty fascinating uh, few weeks and few months really coming up here. It is going to get very compressed after we get these holidays over with. Thanks very much, Bill Crystal, the editor of the Weekly Standard. My pleasure.